What's up guys, Tim from Tim the Drew Films here, back with part 5 of my Blender Game Engine first person shooter tutorial series. And in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to add muzzle flares to your weapons, uh, and have ammo packs, and then ammo on the weapons as well. And we're also going to be replacing these weapons with two other weapons. Um, these ones right here at tutorialsforblender3d.com, there will be a link in the description to download both of them. Uh, but once you're on this page, um, I did get a little bit confused when I first got here, um, but just click on this right here to download both of them, and then we'll replace both of them. Or, but in in this tutorial, I'm just going to be replacing the assault the assault rifle. In fact, no, I think I think I'll replace both of them. Uh, so yeah, once you've downloaded those, uh, you can go ahead and we will replace these now. So I'm just going to go to the first frame, and I'm going to. Okay, so I'll do the pistol first. And basically what you want to do is just import uh, your model by pressing Shift F1 or you can go File Append and then you just want to go find wherever your model is, go to Object and then click on the model and then import it. Um, okay. So now we have the model here and it is tiny. I think you can just ignore that error message we got and think it really is going to affect us. So then what you want to do is just rotate it to the same position as uh, this weapon right here. And then make sure it has the same sort of alignment, like so. So that, that's pretty good. So now we can select this, uh, the weapon first, and then hold down shift and select the empty that the original weapon was parented to. So like that. And then hit control P to object. Then select the other object and delete it. And then you can move this object and line it up with the empty. So now if we press 0 and play, we can see that now this one is, it's been replaced with this model. Say we're going to do the same for the assault rifle, and we're just going to press H to hide this weapon over here, and bring this one down. In fact, we're going to hide this empty as well, so just click on it and press H. And now we want to select this, or don't select it yet, press Shift F1 or File Append. And then go to the second one, Assault Rifle, go Object. By the way, you can use any models you want. Uh, I'm just using these ones because I think they're pretty good. So you're going to click Assault Rifle and Append from Library. Then bring this up, make give it the same rotation as the original, and then line them up together. Now in this case, this one is going to be a bit bigger than this, so I'm going to scale it up more. But as long as they have the same general placement, that's fine. Like that. Then, with this selected, hold down shift, right click on the empty, hit control P, and object. Then select the original weapon, delete it. Uh, now, if you have, if you didn't use empties and you had programming attached uh, to your weapon instead of this, uh, I will. there is a video that I've released um, that shows you how to switch the weapons without losing the programming attached to them. Uh, but otherwise, let's just, so these are parented now, we can just bring them in and line it up with the empty. And then hit zero and just align it as you'd like. And now we can unhide the other one by pressing Alt H. So now they're both unhidden. And now if we press play, we can see that we can switch between these two. By the way, if you don't have the switching system, uh, you can go check on my channel. There is a tutorial on how to do this. It is part four. So if you want to go check that out, there's a link in the description as well. Uh, but now we want to get into the muzzle flares. So there's two textures, uh, links in the description if you want to download them. I couldn't find any good ones, so I made some. Uh, but there are two of them. There's one side flare and then the front flare. If you download both of these, then what we need to do is in, uh, add a plane, so shift A and then plane. Then what you want to do is press tab and then U and unwrap. Then press tab again to go out of edit mode. Go over here to the uh, materials tab, press new. And then make sure you're in blender game over here. And then under transparency, tick it, uh, make it true, and then bring the alpha all the way down to zero. Then you want to go to your uh, texture tab, add a new texture. Uh, make sure it's image or movie over here and then open and then you want to go find your flares these are the ones that you can download but the first one we're going to do is the front so click on the front and open the image and then what you want to do is go down to uh, 
influence and tick alpha. And you can see it's appeared there, but it doesn't look very good. And that's because it is the lighting affected. So we want that to make it shadeless. And now you can see it looks much better and the lighting doesn't affect it. So now we're going to do the side flare. This one's going to be a bit different. We're going to scale it on the Y axis a bit, just like that. And then again, tab, U, unwrap, tab again, and then come over here to the materials tab and a new material. Go down here to transparency, tick the box, and then bring alpha all the way down to zero. Then go to texture tab, add a new texture, uh, open it up, and this will be uh, the muzzle flare side. Then what you want to go do is tick alpha over here, and then you want to tick shadeless. Now in this case, this one didn't come in properly, and that's easy to fix. Uh, all we need to do is go into UV editing, uh, find the thing again, press tab, and then over here, R90. And that's fixed, so now we can go back to default, and now we can continue. So now we have these. Now, without rotating them, because uh, if you do rotate them, it's going to change the global positioning, and that's going to interfere with the game programming. So what you want to do is press tab, make sure you're in edit mode, then hit shift D and then R Y 90. That's going to rotate it by 90 degrees and make it parallel perpendicular to uh, the, the original plane. Then you can bring it up and the same thing with this, make sure you're in tab or edit mode, then R X and 90. And now we want to line these two up. Okay. So bring this one closer. And the thing I'm going to do with this one, I just want to make this uh, a little bit more flat, so I'm going to hit Control R, scroll up a bit, and do the same thing on this one, so that they line up. And then what I'm going to do is select both these edges and just bring them in a bit. Same with these, just bring it in, and these two as well. You don't have to do this, by the way. So now we have these, and now we just want to line them up together. So this one, so we can press seven and five, and just make sure this one lines up. And then press three, make sure they line up. And then one as well, and now you can see that they are pretty much lined up. So now what we want to do is we want to attach an empty to the end of our weapon over here. So just make sure you're on frame one. I'm going to hide the other one for now because I don't need it. Okay. Then what you want to do is just come to the end of the uh, barrel over here and just click on it so that you set the 3D cursor there, then shift A, empty and plane axis, and you can scale this up a little bit. Then with your plane axis selected, hold down shift and right click on your weapon and hit control P to object. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to grab both your textures over here, so this and this one. Uh, now since they're facing the opposite direction, I'm just going to hit tab, A, and then R, Z, 180. And I'm going to do the same for the other one, tab RZ180. And then we want to just drag this one back to align it. And now we can select both of them and we can bring them to the weapon over here. And then we want to position them in front of the weapon, how it would look in the game. And press S to scale it down a little bit. And then we just want to align it. Now you don't have to be too accurate with it, but I am going to try and be as accurate as possible to make sure it's lined up perfectly. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to grab these the, uh, these two front edges, switch on proportional editing, and then bring them in a little bit. Again, not too much. I just want to shorten the front a little bit. Okay, and now we can see that that lens, uh, sorry, not lens flare. Keep on saying lens flare. Uh, the muzzle flare is now lined up with the weapon, and with both of them selected, hold down shift, right click on the empty, and hit control P. And this means that if we press play right now, you can see that it's going to stay with the uh, weapon at all times. Now, another thing that we see now is that we can't see the back of the other, uh, of the other flare. And that is because we have back face culling enabled. So under the materials tab over here, just deselect back face culling on both of them. Now we can see, we can see it from both sides, and this means we can see this uh, flare from all sides of the weapon. 
So you see, we can turn it around. And this means that we have eliminated the need for 3D models for flares. And that will make our game run a whole lot smoother. Uh, but now we have a problem, and that is that it's always on. And we can't always have it on. So, uh, we want to select all of these things together. So the, um, the empty and the, both of the flares. And under empty, you want to add two mouse sensors. And one of them we're going to name trigger value. And the second one we're going to name trigger flash. Okay, uh, now the trigger value, you want to tick uh, on both of them, you want to enable two level triggering. So click these three dots over here and here. And on the trigger flash, you want to set it to one. And on the trigger value, you want to set it to around four. Four is good. Uh, you want to also, with your empty uh, selected, you want to add two properties, name one of them toggle visible, like this, and switch it from float to boolean, and the second one you want to name ammo, switch it from float to integer and set it to about 60. Okay, and then tick I on both of these and make sure under game, show debug properties is enabled. Then if you press play, you should see both of those uh, properties up in the corner over there. So now what you want to do is have all of these uh, selected again, so the two planes and the uh, axis. And under both the planes you want to add a motion. And in this case it's the Y axis, so set both of them to Y45 on rotation. Okay, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to make them sort of appear random so they're gonna have a random motion to them and 45 is the best because it uh, eliminates that feeling that they're turning and sort of gives an illusion of flashing uh, so now we want to have the trigger flash connected the, to both of these so under empty add an and connect trigger flash to it and then connect trigger flash to both of these okay so now you can see when you play it's got sort of a flashing uh, motion and it's you know it doesn't look the same when that when we're finished with it it's not going to look the same every time the flare comes on so you can see that looks pretty good already uh, you can adjust this value the higher the value is the slower it's going to flash for example two flashes like so if I've set it to I mean turn sorry actually this is not really affecting it right now uh, so don't worry about so leave it at one for now, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so it it kind of looks like it's turning, but that won't be an issue once we've done the final thing. Uh, so which is going to be on both of the planes, add two visibility actuators. And then uh, for each one, deselect one of the visibility actuators, like so. And we can name the visible one, visible and the invisible one, invisible. And what we're going to use this for is to have an illusion of flashing. So this one is visible, and this one is invisible. Like so, and then you can minimize those so they don't take up too much space. You can minimize the motions as well. Okay, so I'm going to drag this up, and now what we want to do Make sure they're all selected, and what you're going to do is you're going to connect a trigger value, uh, sorry, trigger flash to these things, uh, and what you want to have is you want to have, under empty, you want to have two properties, and we're going to use the property that we created earlier, which is uh, toggle visibility, or toggle visible, and make one of them, uh, actually you don't need two, just one of them, and change it from assign to toggle. And basically what that can, what that means is going to switch between true and false uh, based on whatever frequency we have over here. So with this and, just connect it to toggle visible. And now you'll see that when we press play uh, and you see the uh, false up in the corner, the property up in the corner, when we hold down the left button, you can see it's constantly changing. Uh, but it might be changing a bit too fast and this is where you can control the speed. So at a frequency of 1, 
it's very fast and if we set it to something like five it's going to or six it's going to be much slower as you can see there so the lower the number the faster it is we're going to leave it at one for now and what we're going to do now is we're going to make this influence the visibility okay uh, so what we want to do is under empty we want to add two properties and both of them toggle visible and you can leave it on equal make one of them equal to true and the second one equal to false like so and then you want to have two ands and the true you're going to connect to one the false you're going to connect to another one now the true you're going to connect to both of the visibles so this visible and the second visible and the false you want to connect to the invisible like so and now what you want is now you're going to see that when you press play it sort of flashes now like that now there's one more thing missing and that is actually there's two things missing the first thing being that that's going to continue forever and if our ammo runs out we don't want it to continue anymore so now we're going to set up the ammo quickly so under empty add a property set it to mine uh, set it to ammo and then minus one and then change it from assign to add and then we're going to use the toggle uh, the trigger value now so add an and connect the trigger value to the and and then that and to the minus one over here so now you can see when we hold down the button you can see it's constantly mining uh, subtracting but we don't want it to go past zero which it currently does you can see it goes into negative numbers which we don't want so the way we fix that is we add a property select ammo and then hit zero for the value and then change it from equal to to greater than and what that means is we're going to connect it here and it means that un unless it's greater than zero it can't subtract uh, one which means that it can't go past zero essentially so where we're connected to this and over here uh, you want to connect to the greater than to that now you're going to see that it can't go past zero so you'll see that in a second now three two one and it can't go past zero but that still doesn't affect uh, affect the muzzle flare so we want it to affect the muzzle flare and we can make it affect the muzzle flare by doing the following what we can do is we want to have uh, the, the same property that we use the greater than over here we want to connect it to the visibility of the muzzle flare so where the and is over here we're going to connect the greater than there and now you can see that it's only going to be on if that value is greater than zero so you see when it gets to zero the muzzle flare is going to stop and there's one more thing that is missing from this contraption over here and that is lighting because you can see that if this was a real flare there would be light flashing everywhere so just a little warning before we go into this if you are prone to seizures I would not recommend watching this because there's going to be a lot of flashing lights so if they disturb you in any way I would recommend to turn this off right now or skip ahead of it um, you don't need this but I'm going to add it because it just looks a lot better so just click around the center over here hit shift A and then lamp and then point and now it doesn't have much of an effect right now uh, so another thing you want to do I'm just going to turn off proportional editing over there okay so we want it to have the same color as this flare so just get up to your flare over here and then under the light tab over here select this and select this little color picker over here and just click on the orangey outline color now you can see that we're getting sort of an orangey tint I'm just going to move this light away so you can see it properly okay we're going to click on that light and we're going to change the energy to about three and I think actually let's just make this very we can turn this all the way up like this and bring that in a little bit just so that we get well not too yellow though so around there that's good okay so now we have this so what we want to do now is we want to make it flash so I'm going to just bring a timeline uh, timeline up here quickly and we want to make sure we're at frame zero and in fact frame one first at frame one uh, hover your mouse over energy three over here and click I and now you see it turns yellow that means we've inserted a keyframe then go to zero change its value to zero and hit I so now you see we have this sort of flashing light 
okay uh, but now we need to tell it to um, switch on and off in correspondence with this flare so with your light selected hold down shift and right click on your empty and now we can just close that timeline I don't even know why I had it open, it didn't do much. Uh, so under the point, you want to have two actions. And uh, select point action for both of them. Now for the one of them, you can leave it at zero. For the second one, you can switch them both to one. And the one with two ones, you're going to name on. The one with two zeros, you're going to name off. And you can minimize these now. So now what you want to do is you want to add two ands uh, under point. They don't have to be under point, but it just needs it to do it this way. And then you want to see where you have your true and false right here. The true you're going to connect to one of the ands and the false you're going to connect to one of the ands as well. Now the true you want to connect to on. So this one over here is connected to this, is connected to on. And the second one, which is connected to false, you want to connect to off. Okay, and then the last thing you want to do, the greater than you want to connect to the AND of the ON. Okay, so now you'll see that, and again, warning, this is going to be flashy, so if you don't want to see it, skip ahead. Right, but now if you press play, you can see, you get this light flashing. And that light flash will only happen if the thing is above zero, so it'll basically do the same thing as the flash. Now you can change the speed at which that flashes, um, also by adjusting uh, trigger flash over here. So if I had it at zero, you can see it's going to flash really fast, but that doesn't look good for our muzzle flare. And I think there's one more thing I'm leaving out, and I'm going to see if I can get it for you here. You'll see that sometimes when you let go, this happens, and your flare stays on. And the reason for that is you can see that value is true. And that's because it's a complete, it's completely random and it has the opportunity to turn true when we leave go. Uh, so the easiest way to fix that is to make it false whenever we let go. So you can see over here we have trigger flash. We just want to add a NAND and connect it to the NAND. And then we want to add a property over here. Set it to toggle visibility and set it to false. And then connect that NAND to the false and keep it on a sign. So now you can see, when we press play, oh, press play, no, when we press play, you can see that it never, we can click as much as we want, and it will never ever stay on when we leave go, like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. The only thing now is we need ammo refills, and for that we're gonna use an object and a little more advanced logic bricks. Well, they're not really advanced, but uh, so the first thing you need is an object. And I've made an object. If you want to download it, you can use any object you want. Uh, there's a download link in the description if you would like the object that I'm using, uh, which is this uh, ammo pack over here. So I'm going to click on it, go object, and click on ammo pack and import it. So now we have this ammo pack in here. And uh, just before I get into this, uh, you may have noticed that I only did muzzle flares for the rifle. Okay, right, so if you wanted to have this muzzle flare on the pistol, you'd follow the exact same process, except you would switch both of these true level triggerings off and switch both of them to tap. So you can see now, press play, you, you can only, it'll only fire once. Uh, now the emission of the bullets, which is coming from, I believe, the empty, uh, as you can see over, where is it coming from? This empty over here. Uh, again, all you need to do is deselect this and just press tap. And you can see now, so following the same process, and now it only fires one at a time. So that's what you could do for the pistol. So I'm just going to re-enable all of this. Let's just re-enable everything to the same as the rifle. Now if I press play, you can see it's the same. Okay, so another thing I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just gonna change the size of this uh, emission right here. So I'm gonna go RX and 90. I'm not sure which way it's flying. It is flying that way. And then we can just make it smaller. Okay, so you can see this is working now, but it is still not rotated. So we can just go 
tab and then RX 90 and then we can go back to layer 1 and we can see now it is looking much better okay so now we'll get onto the ammo packs first thing you want to do with the ammo pack selected go into the physics tab right here and you can keep it on static and then tick collision bounds over here and change it to tri uh, triangle mesh and then you want to change it to ghost so that it doesn't interfere with any of the physics in the game and now what you want to do is you can select this empty right here and you want to make it so that when the mouse when we click on this when we right click on it it's going to refill our ammo or assign there's two ways you can do it you can either uh, refill the ammo which means just set it back to its original value or what you can do is you can add to it I'll show you how to do both so what we need to do select this and under sensors you want to add two mouse uh, sensors not message mouse uh, make leave one the left button and we can name this click and then the other one you want to have mouse over and now what you want to do is change it from left button to right button and then you want to have an AND controller and connect both of these to the AND okay and then you can minimize both of these then with this selected you can hold down shift right click on the empty with the property ammo and then under the empty add an ammo property so there and you can either have a sign and then check ammo if it is a sign then just set it back to its original value like this and then what you want to do is you want to find there is ammo pack there is a controller and just connect this controller to the property so now you can see that if we press play you can see the property goes down another thing you want to do just go under the render tab over here and then go down and tick mouse cursor so you can see your mouse on top of the screen so now you can see if we are pressing this down uh, the value goes down and then if we were to right click on this so you can see it goes down we right click on it it changes back to 60 like this so I'll show you in game like so so this would be working like this and what we would do is we'd see the ammo pack and we would right click on it and we get 60 back like that okay uh, but now it stays there and that's a problem but we, I'll show you how to fix that now another thing you could do is you could change it from assign to add and that means every time you click on it it's going to add to the value instead of change it back to its default setting so you can see we have this and this time it adds to it so every time we click on it it's going to add to that value uh, but the thing about this is that every time we click on it we want to delete it so you can have a few of these packs around the map and every time you click on it it's going to refill but we also want it to get deleted the way we can do that is under ammo pack actuators add an edit object and change it to end object and then the same and you're using over here just click it uh, connect it to the end object now you can see we can press play we can use our weapon and when we click on it, it disappears and we get an add now I'm going to leave mine on uh, a sign which means refill so I can see this works and when we click on it it gets deleted and we have that so you could just duplicate these around a map so R, uh, Z and 90 to face the player and then 7 and 5 and then shift D you could have these spread around now you can see we can use this we can move around and when we go up to one of them and we click on it we can see we get refilled so we can see now we can be using this while walking around and then we get to zero now it's still emitting and I'll, I'll fix that in a second but we filled this and our muzzle flare works also I can just show you the muzzle flare does work from every angle so you don't have to worry about angles it looks good from all angles so you can see I can move around over here okay so that's good now we also want to affect that emission over there so that it stops emitting when the value gets to zero so we're going to select this with the ammo property and then we're going to select the other empty that the gun is parent to or that has the uh, emission property which is over here and all that we need to do is we can see that this is the switch okay 
And what we need to do is we need to assign it to, so we can find the empty and find greater than over here. And then we want to match those up. So here it is. And we want to connect it to the thing that edits objects. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit and empty and edit object right over here is connected to this. And it's as simple as that. So now you'll see, press play, that we can use this. And when it gets to zero, it's going to stop emitting those things. So our gun's completely not functioning. We click this, we can start using it again. And we can carry on, we can just pick up these, but it, so if it was add, you could just walk around picking these up and it would carry on adding. Uh, but for me, it's just assigning. So that is the end of this episode, so stay tuned for the next episode. I will be releasing one or two quick tips, uh, like how to change weapons without losing programming, as well as some other cool stuff, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next episode.